really nice introduction to the fact that you, it's quite simple to make a system that runs on electricity, uh, just plug it into the mains, have a mixer, etc., etc., and that's ultimately what we did out here. It's just a barrel, it's, everything's off the shelf components, and it's just to demonstrate the concept. And the main thing that we're doing outside is, is putting it into context and fitting it into a system where you have a gas holder, you have a, a chopper, you have a pasteurizer, you have everything you need to fit around the digester because the digester by itself, if you want to put food waste through it, even this one here, as spectacular as it is, um, it may or may not meet the animal byproducts or uh, it, and it doesn't store much gas. So we, we need to, we were going to look outside and look at how any of these digesters would actually fit into a system. So there's, uh, when you, just before we go outside, you might not be able to hear me, there's three basic components. There's a chopper pasteurizer, there's a digester, and there's gas storage and a burner. So we'll walk around the side and uh, you can have a look at all of them. It starts here. This is full of food waste. Uh, we got nice donations of food waste from all different places. You take one of these guys. Uh, thank you. And <clears throat> you hit it. I think we can just spin it around. This is an incinerator. You buy this for about 80 pounds at the B&Q or anywhere you like. Um, it's for people to put under their sink and to wash the food waste down the drain, which isn't the greatest, but for our application it's kind of nice because it really pounds the food waste into oblivion. Got it? Um, so then this is the, you can you can actually come a little bit closer and have a look. We, I won't do anything scary. This, the, the food waste comes, the, the slurry of food waste and liquid comes out of here. It goes into this pipe and goes into here. And this is the pasteurizer. And then at a certain point, we will turn this on. This is a heating element. It has a thermostat between 0 and 200 degrees Celsius. We turn it to 70. There's a water bath in the bottom, which, the, so the, pasture, the heater yeah, heats the water in. elements in the bottom. We put the lid on. And uh, obviously, in, in, a, in a real situation, this would be well insulated, and it would hopefully be close to the digester such that you use the heat. Um, but, and then, but that's basically it. And we also have a lid that we put on the, the tank inside. So maybe you want to take one step back, one small step back, and we'll start putting some food waste through here. But the, the fun part is to watch what comes out of here. So you can look. Uh, you, can, you can look. It's, it's really not going to. Uh, it's not going to be too dangerous. Although we need to. Would that much better work when it's dry or not too wet? Needs a bit of moisture. It definitely needs to have some water coming in. Yeah. Uh, maybe. <laughs> it might need to be. It, just, it won't fit through the. It won't fit through the hole. Okay. <laughs> ready to go here? Yes. So, yeah. 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 It basically comes out as a slurry. It's, it's, it's just like, remember the photo of the cow? This is the cow's teeth and his, his mouth. There's some chopped onions coming out from the thing. Swill. Swill. Oh, I didn't kind of It might help, yeah. Think about a grass strip. Mm -hmm. yeah. So you can see it's just completely uh, chopped into oblivion. And when you look at uh, when you look at James's system, he's got teeth that go very slowly and that are much more efficient. But again, this is this is kind of off the shelf and cheap, and it it works immediately. And so if you want to pasteurize something at a, a guaranteed less than 12 millimeters, then this works quite well. We could we could do with a better. Uh, uh, poker. <laughs> Doesn't that come with a machine? <laughs> well, it does with the Indian one. The Indians are ahead of us on this state. They have a poker for you. Plunger. Plunger, yeah, exactly. All right. So this is, you can see what it's coming out as. It's just basically a liquid with a lot of dissolved stuff in it. 
everybody can have a look. <laughs> Unplug it so there's no risk here. Oh yeah, let's lift it up and uh, wave it around. Pass it around. Oh, yeah, buddy. pass it around. Everybody have a look. Very nice, huh? Mmm, delicious. <laughs> Alright, good to go. So the next step, as I sketch, is that with this here is a, is a pipe. Yeah, we're gonna put the needle on the pasteurize it. Oh, pasteurize it. Sorry, I forgot that. All right, that goes on. Temperature goes goes up, except that the water bath. I'm not gonna turn this on because the water bath is not full. But this has got a little variable thermostat, so that's nice. You turn it to 70 degrees, put the lid on, close up the insulation, leave it for an hour, with some temperature probes in it to ensure that it has reached 70 degrees for one hour, then turn it back off. Why? Yeah. Because your government has decided that... So it's just a regulation thing rather than... If it's not vegan, it's an animal byproduct, and therefore it has to be... The diseases have to be interrupted, and their indicator diseases are E. coli and salmonella. That's what... But, but what we're actually trying to kill is fungal Yeah, which doesn't even... It's not even relevant. So, <laughs> so this here is the pump that... But, so this is after it's been pasteurized. So if it's just vegetable waste, that counts as vegan? Yeah. Definitely. But, but, but not if it's been in a kitchen with meat yeah. and milk and cheese. If it comes out of a kitchen, then it's considered what's called category three waste. Yeah. So therefore it has to, it comes under the animal byproducts regulations. So it's a bit right. of um, lettuce kind of rubbed up sure against, you know, around. Is that, yeah, is that trade only or is that domestic? That's domestic as well in this country. On the continent, it's, um, municipal waste is not, doesn't come under the um, animal health program. You'll notice that there's a pipe. Coming from here, going around that tree, and then it coming in here. It's just in your own house, though. So it's if you're collecting domestic waste, if it's just in your own house for so you. So this is the transfer okay. mechanism you because out of your own domestic kitchen. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because it's but clean. Only if you're as soon doing as it's, it in your garden. As soon as it's been pasteurized, it's clean. It has no more E. coli and salmonella, so it's pumped through this pipe. It could also be gravity fed, however you want, and it comes into the digester. This is the digester, which we can open up in a second. But, Sure. Give it a pump and see if it works. <laughs> yeah, the valve is closed, I think. Yeah, the valve is closed, it's fine. So it's very thick stuff. But you can see that it's already it's sucking the stuff out. That's going. Yeah. Anyway, done. Yeah, that's pretty good. It works quite well once it's because if it's sucking air, it's, it's difficult for the pump. But it it's um, so then it comes into the digester. Um, maybe we lift it off again. The basically the the barrel that I sketched is inside of here. It's well insulated. As we mentioned, it needs to be well insulated to preserve the heat. Um, the stuff comes in here. There's a, there's a nice uh, place you can put your hand down. <laughs> and this is the effluent pipe. Remember I showed the... the you, you pump it in hot. You put the heat through. through. <laughs> yeah, it's, a, it's pumped in at, just after it's been pasteurized. So it's quite warm. Okay. The uh, heat heats the system. It comes out. There's, all, there's another heater in there though as well, um, just to maintain the temperature. If I turn this, then you have something coming out here, uh, which is a lot more liquid than what went in, and that's fairly normal for digestion. Um, it means something is happening, the carbon is turning, turning into biogas, rather than chunky solids like this. So i just close this up again. Um, the gas comes out here. This is a mixer rod, so we can kind of like try and break up some of the scum and some of the... Here. And uh, spin it around a bit, get the solids. So, uh, in solution again, the gas comes off here. This this guy here is a, a little thermocouple, which can be attached to either a, a, a temperature recorder, which which tracks temperature over time, or it can be attached to a, just a readout that tells you what the temperature is. Um, this is where the gas comes out. We've got a, a gas valve here and it comes 
through this pipe and it goes over there into this um, blue drum which has an inverted barrel and again unfortunately because we just transported it and exposed it to some oxygen um, the reactor is not doing that well but the reactor that I have at home which is this size or virtually the exact same design I get uh, about 150 liters of gas every day if I feed it properly and I keep the temperature high this effluent, before we go over there, this effluent is quite nice. Um, as you can see, it's liquid, it doesn't smell too bad. All this might, although this might, once the reactor is running properly, it's um, basically all the nutrients are in mineral form. And uh, especially if you, you can separate the, the solids from the liquids, um, it is absolutely excellent for agricultural, garden, any kind of application where you might use compost or irrigation or fertilizer. Um, yeah, so like I said, the gas comes over here, and this here is actually a, um, should be attached to the gas. This is from the digester. This guy is uh, going in the bottom, and for those of you there this morning would have seen the, the details about the gas the scrubbing installation. Basically, it bubbles through a, a solution of iron. The um, hydrogen sulfide is precipitated and the gas ends up in this barrel which looks like it's pretty much empty which is really unfortunate but we'll give it a shot anyway. Um, the gas ends up here in the cooker. Again, very little gas. Uh, do you mind holding this down? <laughs> it's just water. <laughs> We'll give it a shot, see if, see if we can get a flame. I'm not sure we will. There you go. <laughs> well, again, we've had a... There we go. You can see it's... You can't even see the flame, but it is burning. There is a flame. You can see a flame. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, like I said, that's okay. At the moment, we had a, we had some trouble, but again, we, this was just started a few days ago, and uh, we did have gas until we transported it and exposed it to oxygen. And hopefully, Cat will uh, keep some of this stuff running, and you can come back in a few days, and you'll have a. This, when this barrel is full, it floats up to up in the air, and you can see there's a lot of gas, and then. Um, yeah, in, in my kitchen at home, it's, it's connected to the kitchen stove, so it, it can be, we could maybe have a, a better situation than this, have a, have a pipeline going somewhere where people will really use it every day. You can't use 150 liters a day in the kitchen, though, can you? You can, because methane is very low energy intensity. 150 liters is not a hell of a lot. It's like that would be this barrel floating up, and, well, James, what did you say? A hundred, uh, a barrel that will cook a meal or something. I mean, it, it might last for half an hour or something. Yeah. You need more. Because normally it's compressed. So yeah. Um, but but it's still quite it's still quite useful and uh, uh, like a good old fashioned unit. Oh gosh. <laughs> Do you want to go back inside for a question and answer session before next one? Or do you want to see if there's anything else that you want to see here? Yeah, questions, answers. So I'm asking you to stand out in the rain here.